Hey there, welcome to Parkinson's Disease Education. In this video, we're again returning to the older video that I am breaking up into smaller chunks about cognitive changes in Parkinson's disease. This time, we're discussing alertness and attention and the neurotransmitters and areas of the brain affected by Parkinson's that make this change and uh, make this a factor. So, hope you enjoyed this as much as you did last week. Sit tight, enjoy the video, see you on the other side. Overall, cognitive changes will affect 95% of people with Parkinson's disease. So with that being said, only 25 to 30% of those people will develop what's called a true dementia. And we'll go into the differences between dementia with Parkinson's and other forms of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there are two other um, systems uh, of, of neurotransmission that are affected. So Parkinson's also affects the cholinergic system, cholinergic, excuse me, cholinergic system, and the serotonergic system. The cholinergic system is responsible for alertness or attention, and the serotonergic system is, a, is responsible for mood regulation. And Parkinson's can res result in mood changes as well as issues with alertness or attention. With the cholinergic system, primar the primary neurotransmitter involved is acetylcholine, and that neurotransmitter uh, is responsible for that attention or alertness, and with a re with a decreased acetylcholine, which Parkinson's can affect, uh, you get a loss of clarity. Potentially, could have brain fog and temporary confusion. You know, decision making, things like that. Although that could fall into frontal lobe as well. Um, that is affected by Parkinson's disease. Let's talk just a little bit more about executive function. So we talked about. Um, task planning, multitasking, troubles, finding words. Um, also, you can have fixation on topics. So think one track minded, but times 10, <laughs> you know, just won't move on from this topic, obsessed with a topic, can't move on, can't change tracks, so to speak. Um, and that can be associated with issues with frontal lobe and executive uh, dysfunction. Uh, depth perception perception is another area of the frontal lobe, and uh, that can be that can be why people can seem a little more clumsy, maybe bumping into things a little bit more, um, things like that. Let's talk a little bit uh, to conclude about the differences between Parkinson's dementia and Alzheimer's dementia, for example. Um, the main difference is that the memory issues associated with Parkinson's are not forgetting information; it's more resulting in issues retrieving information. So there are memories packed in that that area of the brain uh, associated with memory. But bringing those memories out to the surface can be the issue with Parkinson's dementia. Those memories are not gone, they're just, it's just hard to reach them. And with Alzheimer's dementia, those memories disappear. So that's why people with Alzheimer's dementia tend to forget their own identity. They forget how to eat food or swallow and basic functions. Um, and essentially, they're going from adulthood back to infancy. So they're going to, they're, they're deteriorating to a point where they're going back to awareness of self, goes from the world out here to right here. And so that's basically how an infant is. A newborn baby only sees and knows what's right here for the first you know, a couple months of life. And then they find their hands and they find their feet, so forth. So take imagine that, and then that development is going backwards, collapsing in on itself. That does not happen with Parkinson's dementia. People with Parkinson's dementia don't forget who they are. They don't forget their loved ones. They just don't remember, or I should say they, they have that difficulty with bringing things to the surface. So that's the main difference. And that's uh, that I don't think that's an oversimplification. That's the, the way I've heard it explained by experts that, uh, that do specialize in neurobehavior. One final thought I have too, uh, especially if you're a caregiver of somebody with Parkinson's disease and they do have some form of, of memory issues or dementia, is try to remember to coach and to guide your loved one uh, or whoever you're, you're giving care to 
um, rather than harping on the fact that they don't remember things. So if somebody doesn't remember, don't say, well, don't you remember? Or how could you forget that? I just told you that. They can't remember what they forget. Gently remind them because they can't remember, otherwise they would remember. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't help them or you to say, you know, don't you remember? Well, no, they don't remember. So all you need to do is simply guide or coach them gently and say like, well, now remember, I told you this and that and the other, and that's what we're gonna do. So just remind, bring them back to the memory rather than saying, well, don't you remember what I told you? Things like that. So it, it can be very easy to jump to that, especially it can be very frustrating for people, uh, understandably. Um, especially dealing with a loved one or uh, someone you're caring for. Uh, and you know, th those memories, it's like they never had the conversation with you or whatever. So, well, that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed that and got some good information out of it. Please let me know in the comments what you think, like, and share this video. Please subscribe if you enjoy this material and that you want to see more. I look forward to seeing you back here on the channel next time for the next installment of cognitive changes and Parkinson's be empowered.